Uh, good afternoon. I'm Nick D for VIS, and this is the Soaring Eagle. The this is a starting situation teaser for the Protectorate Bohm Bohemia and Moravia. I'll just say that because I can't pronounce it in German or Czech, so I'll just say Bohemia and Moravia, but I'll shorten it to Bohemia. I'm recording this just because uh, I just had an exam today, and so I'm not really in the mood to record anything longer than like this. We'll also be looking at a Slovak Republic teaser. Uh, this, the Soaring Eagle, I should say, is also uh, it's like an expansion for Germany's content in the Reich Commissariats. Uh, be, and it's also a rework, like uh, Hydrix, different Goebbels is added as a viewer. It's basically, it's aiming to rework Germany. But let's start off, let's look at the states. You can see uh, a lot of German names because Bohemia Mora, Moravia is being Germanized uh, it, because it is a Reich's protector in game. Uh, it only appears during the German Civil War now and then is instantly absorbed. Uh, but let's start with uh, Yaroslav Kreksi. I'll just say Yaroslav. Uh, president of two peoples, president of Czechs and Germans, presidents of partisans and collaborators. All this could have been, all this he used to dream of, and yet the dreams of state president Yaroslav ended up trampled into dust. One of the most capable lawyers of former Czechoslovakia became involved in politics when he realized that the time had come for a new Europe under the rule of the Reich, and in new Europe only he and his mentor, state president Emil Haka, could save the Czech nation. It could have been, uh, Emil Morovic, as is in his new Europe, there would have been no place for Czechs, and it could have been that ridiculous Vlaska, Vlaska movement with its mad plans. For the new order, the Czechs would cease to be Czechs. That is why he became first minister of justice and then chairman of the government to mediate between the two peoples living in the protectorate. Yet he got neither justice nor proper governance. So when Hasha died in a uh, uh, Yaroslav replaced him as state president, he began to dream again for a while. His dream of reconciliation between the resistance and collaborators was brutally murdered at Kladno. The great uprising of the Czech people was drowned in blood. To the horror of all the honest people, the president's blood could have been spilled too. As always, however, uh, Yaroslav defended his position and returned to office, even a bit shook. Since then, his second dream of reconciliation between Czechs and Germans has been crumbling. While the elusive partisans south of Prague kill more and more Germans, Morovec and Protector Frank laugh in his face every day as they together destroy the last vestiges of Czech independence and the president's dignity. But the president knows that he must pers persevere, for without the, him the Czechs would no longer exist. He will save his nation. Even if everyone hates him and curses him, he will never back down. So let's start with the first modifier. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six. Six different modifiers, all with <laughs> lots of red, but a state, but only a name. Uh, cannot train units, cannot produce any equipment. Formerly the protector of Bohemian and, Ma und Maren represents an autonomous state and an equal partner to the Reich, yet the truth is far more dismal. While we certainly do s do not suffer from the same conditions as the general government or other occupied territories, we are not for sure masters of our own faith. The government's army remains frozen by extensive restrictions, making nothing more than an outdated peacekeeping force. Civilian administration is moreover a corrupt collaborant establishment with its greatest achievement still being around. Uh, uh, today the lion lies beaten, tomorrow it's, it may roar for one last time. Now let's start up here with the memories of Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia was not perfect, but at least we were free. We came out of the depression stronger than most, and we were protected from the Germans. Then Munich came. No memory or mo moment has caused so much debate, anger, and outrage as that day during which the West sold us out and let us suffer the every day. When they marched in, we could do nothing. We saw the memory of when we were strong, ripped apart, yet we still remember those times. That memory has powered us and our people. As long as we remember it, there is one Czech left. We shall fight to reclaim what we lost. And then, Germanization of Czech lands. Germanization of our land has been one of the most despised measures the Germans have taken in our state. Under the watchful eye of Emanuel Morovic, uh, Minister of Education and greatest traitor to the Czech people, our monuments, our history, our culture, our pride are all being destroyed and crushed under the jackboot. This has bolstered resistance from all corners, ranging from government officials to the rebels and common man. Everyone knows this is the last roll of the dice for the Czech people, and that a bad roll would mean the, the future Czech history books will end in our time. We will not go like dust in the wind. 
and then the divided government. Ever since its founding, our government suffered from a plague comprising of contradictory ideological groups. The state administration is highly ineffective, lacking a common purpose. While moderate center around President Yaroslav tries to say what little is left to check sovereignty, the Vladka clique of the party falls into slow decline as hardliners under Prime Minister Emmanuel Morvik promote their German philic policies as they say united we stand divided we fall now let's get uh, i mean now let's read falling a uh, failing economy only two decades ago our industry was the powerhouse of europe our industrial goods could be found throughout the world a strong agricultural sector that was the pride of the homeland yet ever since they marched into prague we have seen only our nation decline our industry our wealth is shipped west to the reich leaving us only with table scraps as germany's economy goes into decline we suffer what little we make from exports has been rendered useless as inflation grips the pact the basic structure of the economy is maintained through massive loans from the reich ending any hope for long-term financial stability, as taxation has been unable to make up for the loss. The lack of a stable government has prevented any major reforms from taking place, and said the politicians bicker and debate while the common check sees the standard of living decline. Now let's go to the last one, flame and defiance. A lion is a lion in a cage, it will not become a donkey. Perhaps in Germania, they may think that Czechs are loyal subjects, yet nothing can be further from the truth. Brave and true people with resistance are biding their time, living in the shadows of oppression. In Washington and Rome, the exiles oppose the legit illegitimate claim of traitors in Prague. The moral carcass of politicians who sold their country. Every atrocity, every crime committed by the collaborators or Germans itself, lits the flame of defiance. Uh, Yunov is prepared for the inevitable fall of the Reich. UNS avenges all those murdered in the name of national socialism. Even in the government army itself, the hatred of our sycophantic regime is growing. When will the hour of fate arrive? And I think we know when the hour of fate will arrive. Uh, that is when the German Civil War begins. And now let's re read Rage Against the Dying of the Light. There was no crying, no tears, no sorrow throughout the streets of Petrovice. Now recurrence rechristened as Petrowitz, Jan uh, Srovny stood over a small field that overlooked the village. In many ways, it was like being back in the old times. Closing his eyes, Jan let the warm afternoon breeze take him back. Children ran, screaming and hollering, enraptured inside their playground games. In the village market, haggard merchants bickered over their wares with equally exhausted-looking mothers over pennies. The cafe, with its succulent smell of freshly baked bread, was a meeting place where the citizens of the villages gossiped and gawked over their trivial matters. So like to the other villages, but in its fine strokes, distinct and peculiar, what had happened here was not his fault. This wasn't his burden to carry, never his mistake. It was Hitler's megalomaniac greed that had undone his nation. It was Chamberlain's weakness that had let the great powers of Europe cow out of Berlin, selling Czechoslovakia out piece by piece like hunks of pig flesh. Bartered, stolen, borrowed to whatever silver tongue was the sharpest. No, he had to do what was necessary to prevent bloodshed, no matter the cost. Munich was a death sentence stood over by a court that he ne never even attended, and yet he failed to protect. Uh, to the outside world, a free Czech state was a half-remembered oddity of history, a, qu a quirk of her size doomed to correct itself one way or another. Its people were forgotten by time as the victorious wrote their existence out of history, but their deaths would not go unnoticed. Opening his eyes, Jan heard the children, but they weren't speaking Czech. Their faces were foreign, and their eyes distant. It wasn't Petrovice anymore. It was Petrowitz. As Jan placed a booklet, bouquet onto his windy meadow, he hoped the Germans would come across the Virgil. If he had played his card right, maybe these proud Germans would stop in the, their homes and wonder, wonder what happened to the people that came before them. When remorse is forbidden, the only path is to remember. Let me also look up this guy, because I have a feeling he might be like a, the president of Czechoslovakia, so I'll make a pause and we'll resume if I find anything. If not, we'll get on to uh, their, this little focus tree down here. And my hunch was right. Uh, he was a Czechoslovak general and the prime minister of Czechoslovakia during the Munich crisis. So that's very cool. Now let's switch back to this, and you can see this is just the the opening tree, the Reich Protectorate, Decadent Republic. Under the cross, the line flies once more. Saint Wenceslaus and his disciples. The resistance issue, terrorists in the UN. UNOV, traitors in the government. They call themselves a government, yet they don't have a country. This is probably dealing with the resistance. The crown of our lands, not slaves, but skilled workers. Expand the Skoda works. Accomplishments of our administration and the government meets. I'm also, I'll not read these ministers, but you guys can pause and uh, read it. 
Uh, now let's switch over to Slovakia. They are not getting any content in 0.1, which is going to be the release. You can see Reich's Protectorate Bohemia and Moravia right here. But Alexander Mach. Alexander Mach is a man who has been known by many titles throughout his 40 year political career Minister, Linka, Guard Commander, and finally President. Joining the Slovak People's Party at a young age, he fell under the sway of uh, Tuka, becoming his most fervent follower and friend. A proponent of Slovakia's independence, he quickly he rose quickly in the party with his radical oratory attracting a loyal following. When Slovakia became free, Mach was there, leading the Helenka Guard, and along with his mentor, he clashed with the president Tiso's clerical faction. When with German backing, he was able appointed minister of the interior as his mentor Tuka helped to form a new government. With his control over the police, Mach was able to solidify his faction's influence and earning leadership of the fa of the radicals when his mentor retired, although it was left to overpower the clericalist. When the increasingly senior senior Joseph Tizo died in 1959. The last remaining obstacle in Mach's path was Stefan Tizo, the late leader's cousin. That's just funny to me. Uh, those authority and German connections, he could, he could at last become the undisputed ruler of Slovakia. His pro-German stance has done nothing but tear down the country that he so professes to love. With the failures of the Slovak expeditionary force in the West Russian War already staying on his name, he has let his nation be exploited as his people grow ever more discontent and opposition grows ever more powerful. Mach's position grows shakier with his with just his loyal Hanka guard and Germania's backing, keeping his regime afloat. Uh, I have a feeling as soon as the German w civil war starts, he's gonna die. Uh, but Slovak cultural golden age. The Slovak people have never been free, ruled for a millennium by the Hungarians, to being lured with false promises of equality and the subjugation by the Czechs. Now they have a country of their own to be a Slovak in this time is to experience what their ancestors before them have dreamt of for a thousand years. The golden age of Slovak culture reaching its epoch, fueled by a new generation that was born speaking only the language of their people and then pervasive pessimism. When the Slovaks got their independence in 1939, many thought they would be free to decide their own fate, free to grow and develop without any interference. However, that never happened. The master, worse than the Czechs, the Germans came, while the leaders of the new free Slovakia licked their boots. Now the country languages as the discontent rises. Much of the population sees no option for the truly free Slovakia other than to join the resistance. And die Karpen Deutschen. Since the Middle Ages, ethnic Germans have lived in significant numbers in Slovakia as tradesmen, shopkeepers, and craftsmen. Loyal to the National Socialist cause when the Germans marched into Czechoslovakia, and they now wield disproportionate power thanks to Fran Karm Karmazin's Deutsches, Deutsches Party. Bandits and terrorists align with the dead Prague government like to attack the German population at anchor, which may provoke uh, Germania should we become unable to control the situation and the Heimatschutz will defend its land. And now finally, Disloyal Army. A significant portion of the armed forces are in reality far less loyal than they would like us to think. Rumors swirl of disloyalty even up to the highest rank of governments, of leading figures within the Republic working to bring it down uh, from the inside through coordination with terrorist elements in the mountain. Only time can tell uh, who will prove their faith in us, or who will show their true colors. Anyway, I'm Nick D4VIS. This is The Soaring Eagle. I cannot wait for it to come out. There's, in fact, a bunch of other content I, I'll probably make in a separate video showing, like, Goebbels and Hydrix, uh, Führership, or at least their opening trees. But anyway, I'll see you guys next time.